Welcome to AAPC Social Hour. It is February 8th, 2023. And I am checking to see if we are going live on Facebook right now. I am AAPC Alex from the National Office. Today I have my friends Missy, Kelly, and Chelsea from AAPC's Documentation Advisory Committee. Hey guys. Hello. Hey Alex. And we've had Missy and Kelly on before, and we had a great time before. I think so. Agreed. We came and back. Yes, that's right. There you go. We love hanging out with you, Alex. Awesome. Thank you. And we've got Chelsea, who is new to this, but she, well, Chelsea, are you new to the, to this committee? Uh, this will be my second year, right, Missy? Yep. I think so. Yeah, yep. second year going. So. All right. All right. But definitely. <laughs> okay. Now, Chelsea, you just mentioned that you're in Arizona. Before we went live, you told me that. And yes. right now, it seems like the perfect time to be in Arizona because it's freezing just ab above you in Utah. And is it perfect out there? It's quite lovely, not to brag, but it's been in the, the 60s, high 60s or so during the day. It's been very lovely. <laughs> Sunshine. <laughs> oh, boy. That's awesome. I love it. And, and I Missy and Kelly, remind me, are you guys in the Midwest? Yeah, we're just outside of Detroit in Michigan. Okay. And it's cold. Yeah. You've got, you've got the Great Lakes freezing and all of that stuff, right? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. awesome. And uh, I, I'm kind of curious, Chelsea, how did you find your way onto, the, onto this committee? So... Um, Craig found me on LinkedIn, so social media, right? Craig Larson, on who works for APC. Yep. 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 He found me and connected me with these two lovely ladies, and uh, we connected and asked if I wanted to be part of this committee, and I said, sure, this sounds fantastic, and it's been a great a great experience the whole way around, so I decided to stay another year. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there, because I know with the National Advisory Board and Board of Directors, there are... Um, term limits is there that for these committees there is so there is for our chair people so i'm just wrapping up this will be my third year as the chairperson so i will be rolling off as the chairperson for the committee next year and i think kelly is going to be taking my place as the chairperson but i will still be on the committee so okay so you never know who may be watching you online Yep. from APC and uh, Craig Larson. Uh, he's great. I love Craig. Uh, love working with him. So do and, we. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And so he, he finds candidates for committees on social media mm -hmm. um, and, and then through networks, people that you guys might know, things like that. So um yeah, you just never know how opportunities may arise. And sometimes, I don't know, uh, um, you, you're building relationships. I'm really kind of going into a, a direction of um, reputation, um, if it could lead to employment and rela relationships, networking, all of that. It, it's all about networking. I mean, everything that we do is about networking. When we meet people at conference, when we are talking to people online, even just answering questions on Facebook. If we're answering questions, something that somebody else may say may resonate and you strike up a relationship, you strike up conversations with them and you never know where that's going to lead. Yeah. It's actually roundabout because of Craig that I work with Melissa now. Yeah. Um, I had interviewed for a job with Craig and then two years later, he said, Hey, we're starting this committee. I think you'd be a great fit. Are you interested? I met with Melissa. I was on the committee for a year and a half, almost two years. And then she had a position that was available and here I am. So. Awesome. I love it. Chelsea, have you ever found a position from networking relationships? Yes, that's actually, I was going to lead right after that. Um, my current position uh, right now with Yale New Haven Health, uh, I was found on LinkedIn as well. So it's a very, um, successful and great networking platform, especially for, you know, folks like us that work remotely, you know, I work remotely and I have for years. And so I'm not out there, you know, at all the conferences all the time. And so 
uh, definitely through that platform, I was able to get employment in my current role, which I love. So. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, I don't want to ignore all of our friends who are watching. Everybody's trickling in. Um, first to comment today, Mariah Edwards, who lives not far from me, just down the road in far west Utah. Hi, Mariah. Good to see you again. Um, Tara Carpenter from Oklahoma. Um, Bev Johnson from Tennessee. So I recently interviewed, I mentioned this um, last social hour too, I recently interviewed um, Beverly for I am a PC and her background was so amazing. Like her house is, looks great. And I also um, interviewed a, a friend of hers, um, Maddie, who, who both of them actually help out AAPC and work with AAPC quite yeah. a bit. But both, both of them had these amazing backgrounds and I thought I need to get a plant or something <laughs> instead of a white wall. <laughs> So I, I, you know, I'm I'm trying to step up my game. You guys. <laughs> I was noticing that the plant was new. Yes. Well, uh, confession: the plant is taken from our entryway of Excellent. our house. So I got to get for this back today? before my wife gets home. Yes. Oh. Just for today. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's fake, but Fantastic. my wife. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to buy my own plant, or I'm gonna be in the doghouse. <laughs> we yes. won't tell her. Okay, thanks. Um, let's see, we've got Charlie from Pinehurst, North Carolina. Hi, Charlie. Good to see you. Um, good to have you with us today. Um, Lady uh, Martinez and Lori Haramillo. Um, good to see you guys. Um, they'll be, I believe they'll be in HealthCon um, in May coming up. It's, it felt so long ago, and now it's coming quick. Yeah. So excited. Very quickly. We can't Never wait. Been in Very excited. <laughs> Will so, all of you guys be there? Yeah, our whole committee yeah. is mm -hmm. going to be at HealthCon, which is fantastic because we only get to work together. Well, except for Kelly and I, we only get to meet and work together online. Mm -hmm. So my whole committee is going to be together at HealthCon. So, and it's my birthday at HealthCon. All yeah, right. You should watch out. Okay, I love it. <laughs> what are we going to do? How are we going to party? We are going to see, we are going to see Billy Joel. Mm -hmm. He's going to be there while we're there on the 19th yeah. on the 19th hmm. we are flying in name. early so we can go see billy joel okay very cool i love it <laughs> he's great uh hey we've got debbie um uh, debbie from haver hill massachusetts good to have you with us um debbie debbie is this your first time watching apc social hour let us know um tom gooch who i've spoken with a lot um, he's we've messaged um, on Facebook a lot and I see him I'm so supportive in the group Tom how are you let us know how you're doing will you um, will we get to see you in person um, at HealthCon in May we'd love to meet you and um, let us know how life is treating you Angelica Garcia um, she's she's talking about being professional um, what we were speaking to earlier she says you have to be professional even in your comments um, and on social media because you never know know who is watching. Absolutely. So. I actually was just talking to my students about that last night because, you know, everyone's starting to ask, how do I find a job after I'm done with my CPC course? And, you know, I tell them, you've got to, you know, go online, go on LinkedIn, go on our Facebook page, go to your local chapter, start networking, but make sure you keep it professional because you never know who's looking at those comments for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, our Debbie, who we gave a shout out to earlier, she says she's recently CPC certified um, as of December. Congratulations. Yay. Uh, what an amazing accomplishment. Uh, we know how difficult it can be to pass the exam. Mm -hmm. uh, she's working on her first Practicode module. Um, have any of you three um, Missy, Kelly, and Chelsea, have either of you, any of you done Practicode? I've, I've worked on Practicode as a SME. Okay. So I've, I've worked on some of the stuff behind the scenes, looking okay. at so, technical issues with it, but no, okay. it's, I, I haven't worked okay. on it as All a right. student. When I was okay. uh, teaching for community college in the area, we used Practicode as part of the curriculum. But I understand it's gone through um, an upgrade, yeah, an improvement yeah. since I worked on it. But the students got a lot out of that. Yep, it it has gone through recent uh, updates 
and I know more are on the way. So we're always trying to improve um, everything that we do. Hey guys, we're gonna we're gonna let um, Lee Fifield from our publishing team in, and Brian Van Norman uh, from APC in, and we we have a few things we want to talk about. Um, hey Lee, hello. Hey Brian, hello there. Hi. We're so glad to have you guys on. Thanks for taking time out of your days to join us today. Certainly. Thank you. And it's nice to see a different side of what's going on with APC. Lee, we'll talk about um, HBM um, a little more in depth with you. But Brian, you're here because uh, because one of our most popular articles every year is the salary <laughs> survey. And I thought it'd be fun to have you on just to share what you learned about it. What can you tell us about it? What, what should our members know about the um, salary survey, which is published in the February edition of Healthcare Business Monthly? Great. Well, no, I agree. Thank you. This is a, a great tool and resource. But first, I just want to say thank you to the 22,000 members who contributed and took part in this survey. You know, I, I always say the survey is only going to be as good as the data that we get. And so thank you to those 22,000 I'll do a plug for, for the upcoming survey that'll come out later this year that we need all of our members to take the time to, to share that data. That's such a great resource. As you said, Alex, this is a popular article, popular information that our members want. And so not only do we have the HBM Magazine article, but we actually have a, a blog report out on the website right now. So if you've not gone out there, you can go to the, uh, the member resource area section, um, look under the, the blogs, and you'll be able to find it. If you kind of scroll through, you'll see the 2023 salary report. I always want to clarify too that it's the 23 report, but it's based upon the survey we conducted in the latter part of 2022. So it's again great information, a lot of insight. I mean, I've got so many stats out there, but you know, one of the things I think was interesting is that we've now seen about 75% of our members who responded who are working in a remote environment, whether that's fully remote or a hybrid environment. That's you know, only continued to increase these last few years. So that was an interesting point to, to look at at the survey. But the survey itself, again, you can look at it and, and dice the information in so many ways based on your, your role, levels of years of experience, where you're located, education levels, all of that has been kind of depicted into this, this survey. So it's a really very interactive tool and a lot of great information. Okay. Um, Anything jump out to you from this year's data? I don't know if um, how um, I don't know if you actually helped put together the data, uh, Brian. Sure. Yep. I, I actually we have a great team uh, here of staff who helped put that together. But you know some of the insights. You know you always look at look at salary. You know we did see an overall by just a median average uh, of an increase in salary. Um, with that, what's interesting is when you compare that to the Department of Labor who looks at all industries across the board, our average salary was reported at about 55,400. And that matches very closely what to the DOL, DOL's um, stat based on 2022 of all industries. So it's nice to see when you take us out of just the healthcare business operations, put us into other industries that were, were right there. Based upon the, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2021, we definitely saw an increase. They were showing the the average salary for those in coding and billing at forty six thousand seven hundred. So you you see that definitely there's an increase based upon their stats to what we're finding in our survey overall. Um, you know, I, I always also say as I caution is when you look at some of this information by state, especially, and you go out there and look at the information. As I said, we have seventy five percent of our staff, our members, working from remote environment. But also it's based upon those who responded to the survey. So some of these smaller states, you know, I'm going to give a shout out to like Delaware and Alaska and things like that, where we don't have as many members. Just be cautious when you look at that data, because it's strictly based upon just the number of responses we got back from that particular state. Okay. Sure. All right. But it, it gives a good overview. Very, very much so. Another thing that's interesting is, you know, based upon those uh, members, 86% of our members said they're either very satisfied or satisfied with their, their current employer. So a shout out to those employer companies, uh, to the other 14% um, who said they were not as satisfied or perhaps looking, you know, re leading reasons for why, you know, salary, um, being able to work remote. So as I mentioned, that stat's gone up, people who are looking for those remote opportunities. 
and just being able to better utilize their skills and experiences in the position. Yes. Well, one interesting thing uh, that I see on the, there's a table in the article um, just showing the income by experience. So obviously, um, you know, starting out, um, it's, you know, it, it's an entry level position, but it grows pretty quick. And I think from watching comments in the group it, and knowing the different directions that members can go with their career, it can, it can jump as quick as you want to um, explore um, your, your path in the business of healthcare. For sure. Very much so. And a couple of things I also like to point out is, you know, based upon this survey, um, you know, the member webinars we do every year where we do the four webinars for our members, we recorded one back in December that actually did an insight. Ray um, did an insight of the salary data. So if you've not had a chance, I encourage all of our members to go out there, look under the uh, the member benefits, under the, the Savings Center CEUs, you'll find that webinar recorded back in December. It's uh, CEU eligible as well, but again, it's like a lot of insight where Ray kind of breaks it down and goes by the various sections to to kind of walk you through that that salary information. Okay, and I can't restate what Brian um, what Brian what you said about um, our our data is only as good as the number of um, respondents we have because I I have seen um, in the past anyways uh, comments of how this data doesn't reflect where someone is and that might be a regional sure. thing and um, what health system or or um, facility you work for um, but also uh, we we do not do anything with the data other than share it with you we bring it in and present what is given to us so this is um, this is just clean and fair and what we what we show you sure um, and just to add to that it's also anonymous so again we're not asking for individual information so make sure yes. that you know that you're just sharing this just to help us be able to provide that data back you know i'm just scanning through the uh, the magazine and i stumbled on um lee's article lee yes <laughs> um i see your article on the calculator the salary survey calculator. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how it can help out our members? Sure. Well, uh, you know, like Brian said, the the data that comes in for the overall survey, you know, is an amalgamation of of uh, only the people that submit data, and um, you know, it's 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 an average of everybody from different places. If you use the the calculator, you can narrow down uh, what you can reasonably expect to earn for your position and your experience and um, and your location uh, just by putting in some specifics into it. There's there's all I mean there's a, there's a whole laundry list of specifics you can put in um, as to the particulars of who you are and where you work and and what your experience is. So you can narrow down a bit more um, more closely what you can expect to earn as you are either entering the field or changing jobs, or even just, um, you know, even if you just want to see if things have, have changed within the past year, as, as far as overall, um, you know, salaries are kind of across the board, but, but it'll, it'll specifically narrow it down to your state and your region and your experience. Okay, great, great. Brian, I should have done this as soon as you hopped on, but many uh, may not know you. Would you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what your role is with AAPC? Sure. No. So I am serving as the uh, executive director overseeing membership, uh, our local chapters and our events. So I heard you all talking about the upcoming conference in HealthCon. So excited to see everybody in uh, Nashville. I'll just do a plug for that as well, that it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, we're really focusing on, you know, education, but also building on the community connection and networking. And, and again, Nashville is a great city. So we look forward to, to bringing the two together of education and networking for all of our members. So, and we're seeing great response. You know, we've got close to a little over a thousand people who have registered either for in-person or virtually already. And we're still, you know, about a hundred days out from the conference. Okay. I'm so Lori Harmillo. The conference. Oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited yeah. because I, because of the pandemic, I've been doing conference, but from home, so right. this is my first conference in person in a couple of years. I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's my in first first in person ever. So I'm very excited. Well, good. Well, we're excited as well. <laughs> um, Brian has a reputation, at least from, I think it, last conference in Colorado was his first conference. You may have seen this comment from Lori Harmilla, Brian. He, he says, Brian, the dancing king. <laughs> 
we, so we had a lot it, of fun, you know, you know yeah. we, we know we're in Nashville, so be ready for some two-stepping everybody. So uh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Do I, does that mean I have to buy some Wranglers, you guys? You're going to buy some Wranglers and some boots and maybe the big belt, belt buckle as well, Alex. So. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Lee, <laughs> what jumped out at you in this month's Healthcare Business Monthly? Well, you know, I, I really liked the article that Renee wrote, um, Renee Dustman, the, our managing editor for the magazine. Um, she wrote an article on the new Z codes that are that are coming out uh, April 1st to capture more social determinants of health. And, um, you know, I've just been reading, we, we've been writing and reading a lot about, you know, SDOH lately. It's, you know, part of the CMS framework for for health equity and and just to see that they're you know they're coming out with new codes more specific codes you know more granular granular codes um, for those social determinants um, you know was 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 great for me because it's um, you know there's there's a lot of health inequity in certain areas of the country and certain um, communities and you know just you know the more data you can collect on where kind of you know um those areas lie is 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 always a good thing so that that that's the one i i kind that kind of caught my attention the most we need those diagnosis codes to tell the story of what's happening mm -hmm. with the patient and that's what i keep trying to reinforce to people all the time it's not just their medical condition it's all of those other things that are happening outside of the office and you can tell me that story if you're using the diagnosis codes so i'm a huge proponent of those SDOH diagnoses for sure. And they don't have to be just from physician documentation. I think that's kind of the misconception, you know, from the coding side is you can pull from other areas of the record, look at your guidelines, you know, and tap into, you know, your resources that you have in that code book, you know, to make sure that you're capturing those as well. Exactly. Awesome. Well, I have to tell you what caught my eye were three articles about the heart and one being, um, uh, depression and the possibilities of, of um, heart disease being related to depression. Um, we are highlighting those because it is Valentine's month, you guys. So we're all about the heart um, this month. And I don't know if that was by design, Lee, or if that just kind of happened. But um, so check out those articles as well. A cardiology, I, I feel like for our students anyways, cardiology can be tough for them to grasp. Is that true? Absolutely. It's, I, I think it's one of the harder chapters for people to understand. There's a lot of moving parts with it. Um, but if you're lucky to have a really good instructor, <laughs> we can help oh, you with it. Very much. Okay. Awesome. Well, Lee, Brian, thanks so much for being with us. And we will see you next time. Okay. Great, I appreciate it. And if I could also, one last thing is just put in a plug. We have a, you know, with the salary survey, we have a webinar coming up on March 3rd. Remember, it'll be live and also recorded, and it's going to be on mock interviewing, so tips and best practices. So just, again, trying to find ways to support our members, um, those who are on a, you know, kind of a career journey at this time. So appreciate That's it. That's fantastic. Oh, and um, Lee, I, I didn't let you have your moment to pitch writing for Healthcare Business <laughs> Monthly, which I'm putting a link to that in the chat right now. Perfect, perfect. Yes, everybody, please. Um, if, you, if you have an issue that um, you want to read more about well why not write it yourself you know send us a send us an article um you know now that the holidays are past we've been getting more articles but we can we can always use more so any topic from you know coding to auditing to practice management we want them send them in lee is there Amazing. is there a list of topics that you're always looking for are there certain feel or certain things that you just don't seem to get information on that would be good for someone to submit or is it anything? It, I mean, it can be anything. I mean, sometimes it depends, um, you know, as things come up, as new things come up, we, you know, we're looking for those, those articles. We don't have a kind of a set list of things we're looking for. Um, you know, it's, it's usually more kind of things that are timely, things that are new, things that people need to know that maybe they don't know yet. But of course, there, you know, it, it can be anything if, if um, you know, even a, a portion of thing, if there's, you know, one new code or one change in a code that really affects, you know, how you do your job um, and, and how you're sending claims, then, you know, we, we, you know, we want to know, we want to know about those things too. What if I'm not a good writer? 
What if if I have a great idea, but I'm not a great writer? Well, Renee and I can help you out with that. We, we will edit it all the way down as, as long as all the bones are there, you know, we can help, help it the rest of the rest of the way, just the information needs to be there, but we can help, we can always help with the language. So don't, don't be afraid to submit something. Um, if, if, you know, if you were, you know, if you were super duper writer, you'd probably be a writer. So, you know, don't, don't feel bad about it. (laughs) I think sometimes that's what stops people from submitting articles. They're afraid that it's either nobody wants to hear what I have to say, or I don't know how to put it in a way that people will understand. Yeah. So I think it's great to let them know that that's what you and Renee will do. You guys will, you'll make us sound smart. Well, you know, you're, you're going to sound smart on your own. We just, we're just going to, we're just going to massage the language a little to, to help it to be, you know, specifically clear and, and, and understandable. But again, as long, you know, if you're the expert, you'll, you'll get the information down. Um, And that's, you know, that's what we need is your expertise. We don't, we don't need um, your language skills as such. It's always nice if you can if write really well, but that's, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for your expertise. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Send it in. And I'm going to throw this out there because I'm looking in the comments and we have veteran coders who've been doing this for the whole career. And we also have students watching who are trying to pass their exam. And this is open to our students as well. I'm looking at you, Amanda Hammer. Um, she says, I've had a hard time passing my CPC exam. I mean, how great would it be to share that experience? Um, you know, after you pass your exam, you could share what it was like and the things that you did to mm-hmm. pass your exam. Uh, that yeah. would inspire many others. Same with you, Arlene Sumi from Orlando. Uh, so and maybe you have um, experience with resumes or interviewing or these soft skills that we tend to overlook, but are so critical to job success. Yeah, we certainly include lots of articles on soft skills because anything that has to do with coding, and that's from, you know, studying for your exam to, you know, passing the exam to, you know, like you said, Alex, becoming, you know, a veteran, you know, with 30 years experience. So, you know, if you have study tips, if you have something that really helped you and made all the difference, yeah, you can send that in you know, as an, as an article and, you know, it, it may help others as well. So certainly just as a person who's been part of a group that submitted a couple of articles to the magazine, it's pretty awesome seeing your name in print in that (laughs) magazine. I mean, I I absolutely love that we're helping people and we're sharing information, but there is that little selfish satisfaction of seeing my name in print too. So well, and, and those sorts of things are resume worthy. They help, well, they add to your portfolio mm-hmm. on LinkedIn and mm-hmm. show, you know, for a student to, who may speak at a chapter about things that they are experts at, like resumes or, you know, not having experience as a coder yet, but you putting your foot forward and stepping into the, um, the coder world says a lot about who you are, your willingness to learn and your desire to get that first job. So, all right, Lee, Brian, thanks so much for being with us. We'll talk to you later. Good, thanks, okay. appreciate it. Thanks a lot, bye-bye You're now. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Uh, Chelsea, uh, Kelly and Missy, we, I wanna get to what you guys want to share, but first let's take a few comments. <laughs> uh, going back to Amanda, um, Amanda Hammer, um, who is struggling to pass her CPC exam. Uh, my first thought, and I know there's some great comments um, helping you out, Amanda. Uh, my first thought would be get your areas of study. Um, you can call customer service or email them and they can help you get that. But focus in on those areas of study where um, you may not have done as well or where you can improve. Um, also, I pitch this all the time. Just the practice exams are inexpensive. They are so helpful. And anyone who does not use those, I just I am I am just a huge advocate of them. They well, they can help mm-hmm. get you there. Any thoughts on your guys' end? Well, I have two. One is on the practice exams. So I am something um, of a serial certification getter. 
And um, I always get mine with the practice exams. So I will go through and I'll do a practice exam before I even start studying really for the new one, just to see if there's any areas that are glaringly obvious that I need to work on. And I, I tend to start focusing on those first. And then once I study, I'll go back and, and take them or take a different version of it. So I kind of use that to help me guide my study a little bit. Um, and then something, I don't know if it's so much as a tip for studying, but it's something that I tell my students and that's don't be afraid to let yourself be really bad at one of the body systems. You get 30 questions on most of the exams that you can get wrong and still pass. So if you are really struggling with say the cardiology or some other chapter, it's not a bad thing on your part to say, you know what, I'm going to give my permission, myself permission to get half of these wrong. I'm not going to stress over it. I'm going to do my best, but I'm not going to stress. That saves a lot of mental headspace when you're in the exam and you come across those questions. You're like, you know what, here we go. I'm going to answer it. Maybe I'm going to save it to the end. Maybe I'm going to do it right now and just move past it. But then you're not getting yourself in the headspace on that exam that, oh my gosh, I don't know this. What am I doing? Because that's, that's a hurdle to overcome during these exams. And if you've already given yourself permission to give yourself leeway on a, on a section that you struggle with, it really can make a big difference. For sure. Right. I, I can't uh, agree more with, uh, or I couldn't agree more with what um, Kelly said about the practice exams. I do a same or a similar method where I'll use the study guide practice exam to kind of calibrate and see where I'm at and then do my studying and then go back and take that practice exam kind of near my test date and and try to you know uh, see where I'm at from there and usually you know I can see that I've had a um, you know an increase in my knowledge of course you know by uh, studying um, but yeah definitely uh, th they're very beneficial for sure. The other thing I try and remind people all the time and it's so hard to stop myself from doing it but don't start off by reading your operative report and trying to code it because you don't have time for them in the exam. You don't. And it seems point. counterintuitive because I'm learning how to be a certified professional coder or a certified risk adjustment coder. That's what I should be doing. But on the exam, it's about moving quickly through that information and you know, the, knowing those guidelines or knowing how to get to those parentheticals and being able to look at my answers and go, yeah, those two things can never be reported together because there's a parenthetical. It's wrong before I even go and look at my operative report. Um, and give yourself permission to do that. You're still coding. We're just doing it in sort of a reverse order. That's true. Yeah, that's, good. that's a good tip. Tom Gooch says, when early in my CPC studies, I joined my local chapter before I'd even consider the networking benefits I was pleasantly surprised at how quickly I met others and the resulting networking that landed me a job in a short in short order. I wish I was going uh, to a conference soon, but no solid plans yet. Okay, we'll see you down the road, Tom. But I love um, your testimonial for uh, networking and connecting with other coders. You can do that in so many ways. And this is for Arlene Sumi, who's talking about um, networking and starting her networking journey. So. You have the AAPC Facebook group, which is a great place to connect and meet other coders. Um, you have your local chapter. In fact, I'll probably flip those and start with your local chapter and get to know those locally in your area. And I would, if you don't have a LinkedIn page yet, a LinkedIn account, create a LinkedIn account, um, put whatever job history you have, that's okay, but just um, show that you have a great work history and connect with those coders on LinkedIn. I would connect with every coder in your area. Just find them <laughs> and, and just yeah. maybe take one of them out to lunch. And just, it's yeah. true, it is. It is totally true. I mean, in, in full transparency, that's actually how Kelly came to work with me here because Kelly was a local chapter officer for her chapter. And we're in Michigan. And when I had a position open up in my organization, I sent it to all the local chapters in my area and said, can you push this out to your membership? And yeah. that's, and that's, that's how she found out. And that's how we started talking about it. Mm -hmm. I did yep. send it out. We did send it out still. I didn't forward <laughs> it for myself, just for the record, but yes. 
Uh, well, we have so many great comments, um, you know, in, in regards to helping pass the exam um, from purchasing practice exams to just flat out study, really um, know your stuff in and out best you can. Study guides um, are helpful, um, says Angelica Garcia. Um, yeah, so a lot of resources and where you may feel lost or let, let's say you um, um, you feel stuck. Well, uh, if you're through an APC program, um, you can uh, or training, you can um, connect with your uh, with a, a teaching assistant or a helper um, via email. I know we have virtual um, led um, classes as well, where you meet. No, you guys are you guys uh, TAs or oh, leaders? We're, we're both instructors for the VILT okay. courses. Yep. Okay. All right. And you guys are just like popping on my radar like crazy lately. Like I didn't know much about that program, but now I, I it's raining built instructors and yes. teaching assistants. Yes. <laughs> there's a lot of us now. So yeah, okay. there's a lot of demand. So there's, they're, they're really stepping up, which is awesome. And I, I know, uh, yeah, I would need that be, because you, you know, you, you meet once a week as a class for an hour or so. Tell us a little bit about that, you guys. So the VILT, the virtual instructor-led training courses, we have them for a variety of our certifications. We do an hour of office hours during the week where students can ask really any questions that they want. Mm -hmm. But then during our class time, we do an hour to an hour and a half of class time during the week where we cover the most difficult concepts or the hardest concepts for people to master when it comes to the exam. We typically do one to two chapters a week from the CPC course. So it moves quickly, um, but it's a huge resource. It's a great resource because you have a live instructor that you can come to and you can ask questions about anything related to this industry. Mm -hmm. I love it. I've been teaching with the VILT course almost since the very beginning of VILT. Okay. And I love it. And students then have access to us through the week too. We yep. have emails that I we're constantly answering emails, which is fantastic because I love, I love seeing the way that new students look at questions and the ways that they're trying to answer them. Um, so that's fantastic too. And sometimes you'll see enough questions come up during the week that you're like, you know what, in the office hour, we're just going to talk about it as a group. Yep. Because and it's yep. it's fantastic, and I love. Um, I love having the students get like really excited. There's always some nerves toward the end when, you know, the, the exam is coming up and it's real, but there's a lot of excitement that like, Hey, I've been working really hard to get here and I'm so excited. It's finally close. Yes. I think, uh, about Maddie Daughtry, who I mentioned, I interviewed for IMAPC and he started his coding journey when the pandemic hit, you guys got to check it out. If you haven't, um, just go to our YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, he's, He's a Broadway dancer, performer, actor. Uh, the pandemic obviously shut down New York City, uh, shut down every city, but he's in New York um, and jumped into an APC course. Now he's uh, he found a job pretty quickly and he is um, a, a teaching assistant. Like yeah. two yes. years later, he becomes a teaching assistant. That blows my mind. The teaching assistants, I think, are such a great resource they, they tend to help in, in just a lot of ways, providing extra support and really, I don't know, rounding out the whole instructor process. So I'm, I'm really glad that we have so many. Yep. And Lady Martinez, she's a teaching assistant. She just mentioned that. Um, she says being a TA is also a pretty amazing job. So these are jobs. You guys aren't volunteering, but, um, you know, part-time jobs to, to help out these amazing students who are on their journey. Um, so, so like I said, they just keep popping out of nowhere, you guys. Um, but Hopefully not in a bad way. <laughs> no, great. I love it. It's exciting. I'm, it's so exciting to me that there are those, um, you know, because being a teaching assistant or instructor isn't um, um, a money tree. It's, it, it is, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, no. you're doing it because you love it. Yeah. Exactly. I'm doing it because I love it. I love working with the students. And then I run into them at conference or I run into them at a chapter meeting and they're like, you were my instructor. I went to get my nails done last month and somebody walked in and I looked at her. I'm like, I know that face. You were my instructor. And she oh, sat wow. down next to me and we chatted the whole time that we were getting our nails done. <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. Yes. Uh, Chelsea, 
how long have you been a coder for? I've been a coder for 13 years now. So I've okay. been in healthcare for about 18, but I've been in coding specifically for the last 13 years. Okay. So, so you had uh, your, your past started before then, was it in the revenue cycle or uh, coding? I mean, not coding side, but yeah. the office side. Definitely revenue cycle. I I came from a claims payer role uh, for a Medicaid plan in my state and uh, kind of struck my interest in coding. And then I just went back to school and uh, started that journey in my education of building on that. And here I am now. And I'm, I, I, while I don't do the built courses, I do teach um, the coding courses for my community college that I'm actually uh, alum, alumni from. So it's kind of exciting because I can tell them, look where I'm at, you know, after I've been through the program, you know, you can get into these roles and build your career, um, you know, into these areas for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Don Kirby says she just passed her CPB. She's so happy when her certificate came. So okay. congratulations, Don. Love it. That, um, that was, I think, one of the harder tests that I took. I took I've that heard. one later after I got out of billing and uh, it was, that one was one you work for. So well, any of you, any chance that any of you are CICs? Mm -mm. Yeah, no. No. Okay. No. So we have a question um, about how to move through the CIC exam scenarios a little faster. Um, Rochelle, this is for you. Um, I recommend hopping into the APC Facebook group and mm -hmm. uh, throwing that question in there. I'm sure you'll get a ton of responses um, yeah, yeah. to help you out. That's exactly what I was going to say. Missy, what's going on in this committee of yours? So we are pretty excited. We've got a couple of things going on that we're, that we're tackling right now. So Lee's already gone, but we have an article that we're just putting the finishing touches on right now that'll be out in Healthcare Business Monthly later this year on PA billing and Incident 2 and all the ins and outs for that. And then we have a webinar coming up on March 15th where we're going to be tackling the documentation and coding changes for the new hernia codes that happened in digestive. Because if you do those, you know that that whole section sort of got blown up and revamped and some really interesting changes that took place there. So we're going mm -hmm. to be tackling those. Looking for anybody who may be using them, who's got questions on them. Mm -hmm. It's really going to be sort of an ask and learn um, so that we can, can walk through those. Mm -hmm. I am headed to our website right now and I'm clicking on webinars. And I'm just wanna, I just wanna make sure I can find this and that everybody can find it. Oh, uh, let's see. What day is this on? March 15th. <laughs> there we go. Um, Ask and Learn 2023 Changes for, for, for Hernia Coding. And I'm gonna drop a link into the chat for those that uh, may be interested. Um, tell me about the type of coder that may run into hernia type of coding in these issues and surgery sorry go ahead right away yep, oh, sorry. Go, ahead, <laughs> go ahead kelly sorry oh no no i'm same things um i was gonna say it's gonna be your general surgeries it's gonna be your um i guess potentially you hmm, you might see them feed in through the ed but i think primarily your general surgeries your your uh your GIs could get some action going on in there as well. Um, okay. All right. So let us know in the comments if you're a GI coder, coder or general surgery coder. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Let us know if you're out there. Um, uh, and we hope to see you in on that presentation. Or, yeah. Or if you are a student who's studying for the exam and uh -huh. you need some help mm -hmm. with those codes, because we're going to really break down the guidelines during um, our ask and learn session. Um, yeah. Interesting, yeah. okay. There's, a whole, there's not a whole lot of resources you can really find on that just yet, just because it is, you know, exactly. two right now, so. so. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious, uh, Missy, because you mentioned students and just, I'm not a coder, but uh, if I went in there, would it start at a place where I could grasp it and, Get um, get some traction and and figuring all of this out. I guess if I'm and have a little bit of um, 
experience with our curriculum. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to break these codes down. They're brand new. So our goal is really to break them down and explain them so that anybody can use them and anybody can know what documentation we're going to need to be able to code for them correctly. And, okay. and from past webinars that we've done, we generally start with maybe a little bit more of a, a basic knowledge. So if you are new and you don't have as much of a knowledge base yet, we're, we try to cover some of the terminology that you might not be familiar with, you know, it's not going to be a long time, but we do try to touch on it so that as we're talking through things later, you know, we're referencing. So um, it's, it's definitely a shorter part of it, but we do try to give a little bit of a background on it first before we start really digging in. Okay. And you guys do these ask and learns, it seems like at least once a quarter. Do you, do you know? So every one of the committees, we, there are six committees total that are advisory committees for AAPC. Each one of the committees um, tries to do two a year. So that means with six committees in 12 months, we each do one a month. Um, we do one twice a year then. Um, we also try and do a round table, which is like a four hour um, presentation once a year as well. In addition to some articles, and we're always looking for people who may want to join us on this journey. We we have some fun when we're meeting. Okay. We do. Awesome. It's a fun way to be involved. Yes. Great. Awesome. Okay, well, we'll look forward to that. That is March 15th. Yep. March 15th, and um, I put a link up above, Hernia Coding, Ask and Learn. Um, learn about um, those changes that were recently implemented um, this year. All right. Well, can I tell you guys what I'm I'm working on right now? Yeah, uh -huh. please. Well, um, for many of, you, of our members don't know that we have a, a, a bunch of free tools. Um, the EM calculator. Um, let's see here. I'm just looking through them now. I'm going to put post the link to these tools. RVU calculator, um, claims denial calculator, I-9 to I-10 code conversion tool. Have you guys ever used that or were you even aware that that existed? I Absolutely. Used, yeah, I used it a lot in the beginning. I've okay. gotten out of needing them now, but for the converter, but yeah, definitely. All right. Uh -huh. um, and I'm going to put that link in here right now. Let's see, where did I go? Okay. And um, Ray, every year, Ray Marie Jimenez, our um, uh, VP of or director of um, product, she messages me to update the UM, EM utilization tool. And this is as close to codes that I ever really get, but there's, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of codes. I put them in spreadsheets and um, put new values in and then I ship it off, but um, that will be updated um, I'd say within the next month, I'm working hard on it right now, trying to get it done for Ray by the end of the week. But um, here are all of those tools, everybody, free AAPC tools. And I don't think you need to be a, a member of APC. I think, you, I think they're out there for everyone to use. And um, it takes a, a, a small army to keep all of these running and up to date because uh, yes. there are so many. And we appreciate uh, all of you. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of amazing people here. Uh, and just looking through them, let's see, the salary survey calculators on there. We spoke about that. Lee uh, mentioned that. Uh, but there's a lot of different things on there that may help you out. Uh, just a, another resource that we try to provide for our members. All right. Okay. Well, finally, as we wind down, you guys, what else does the documentation committee have up their sleeves. What are you guys working on? What do you guys talk about? <laughs> um, <laughs> or is it just a party? <laughs> um, some days it's just a party. A lot of days it's it's a lot of planning. Um, we're constantly trying to brainstorm new articles that we can write for HBM. Um, whether or not we're working on an article, maybe individually by ourselves, it's, you know, the group is going to help us with some editing before we submit it, or if it's an article that we're writing as a group. Um, we are always trying to like plan for what our next presentation is going to be like, oh my gosh, I heard this really great idea. We could talk about that. Yep. 
Um, I think we're trying to get figuring out what kind of shenanigans we're going to get into at HealthCon this year. Um, <laughs> That's been a hot topic. <laughs> yeah, we've got a couple of articles. Like I said, we've got one coming up for um, physician assistance and incident two billing. We've got something coming up for later this year on HCC coding. So we'll be around and maybe uh, having and a little bit of shenanigans at HealthCon. So come find us there. Okay. Yes. Love it. Um, uh, what are you looking forward to most about Nashville? Obviously, Billy Joel is on the radar for yes. the big uh, yes. Missy birthday party. Yes. Uh, but uh, ha have you guys, um, the three of you, been to Nashville before? I have never. No. I have, I have never. I've never been to okay. Nashville, but I can tell you, honestly, the thing I'm most excited about, perfectly honest, seeing all my friends because yeah. it's been way too long since I've been able to see some of my AAPC family in person. So I can't, that's the thing I'm probably the most excited about. Yes. Our Denver regional conference felt kind of like HealthCon. I know it's supposed to be like a mini, a mini version, but it just, it just was nice to be with everybody again. And looking forward to have the whole group, um, HealthCon, the national conference is a different level for sure. I, I do have to ask though, Alex, are, are you and Dave going to be doing aerobics for us again? <laughs> oh, oh, geez. You know, um, I haven't seen it. Honestly, they just tell me where to show up and what to wear. <laughs> <laughs> there's some, there's so, some great stuff. Aerobics and dancing. I have a lot to learn going yes. to health for the first time yes. so this is gonna be exciting <laughs> it's a ton of fun it's a ton of fun so yeah i i don't know um what's up what what's up dave's sleeve um and i, I wish that didn't make it into hbm <laughs> we we don't need pictures to um to we absolutely document need those pictures need <laughs> <Be> proof <laughs> i think i well, speak I to in our country hey the i was visiting the um Kansas City, I believe it's the Kansas City, Missouri chapter. They are amazing and huge, and they were so great to me. They had a tiara on me and then put a bowl around me. And then the publishing team, Renee and Lean, and them, they were they were like, hey, can we put this in the magazine? And I'm like, hey, I got to draw a line with the Sandy guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody from Kansas City who's on right now, we want those pictures. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'll keep them out of the magazine. We just oh boy, there's oh a boy. Need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, uh, Kelly, Missy, Chelsea, stick with me just for a moment. Everybody, thanks for watching. It's been a ton of fun. So good to um, be with you. And I love seeing the student coders and in, in here asking questions. And I hope that we um, help inspire you and um, help give you confidence as you go forward in your studies. Uh, I just encourage you, if you have not already, to hop into the APC Facebook group. There are two Facebook groups. You're allowed in to the general Facebook group. There's a certified members group that we keep exclusively for professional questions, coding questions that, um, that may help you in your job. Um, so go ahead, check that out. Um, it will be back in two weeks. You can watch this broadcast on our Facebook page, not the group, but the Facebook page. We'll also um, post this on our YouTube channel in the coming days, as well as our podcast feed. So if, you, if you're a podcaster, you can uh, type in to your uh, podcast app, the AAPC podcast, and you can find these broadcasts. You can listen to it while you um, cook, while you clean, while you're driving to work, um, or you can um, also listen to the IMAPC interviews, be inspired to learn about um, the di many different paths that coders take from like you guys. Um, I'm sure you came into coding, think I'm going to be a coder, but then you take a path that maybe you didn't expect. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, that's what talk. I love. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, guys, thank you so much. Oh, Craig Larson jumps in now and says, I missed the whole thing. Oh, that's probably good. Craig, shame Craig. on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Craig, uh, thanks for joining us a little late. But hey, everybody, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.